What if I told you a teenager from Africa built a phone that needs no SIM card, no data plan, and no airtime, yet can still make calls? Sound impossible, right? Well, not only is it real, it got banned. Why would anyone silence such brilliance? Meet Samuel Aboaji, a 17-year-old tech prodigy from Ghana, with a mind decades ahead of his time, while his peers were browsing social media. Samuel was building circuits out of scrap electronics and unlocking the secrets of wireless communication. In a small workshop tucked behind his family's home, he engineered a mobile phone that could function without traditional SIM cards or airtime. No network provider. No monthly bill. Just pure, decentralized connectivity. Samuel's invention uses a combination of radio frequency communication, open-source mesh networking, and locally configured towers, allowing devices to talk to each other independently of major telecom infrastructure. Imagine a world where communities could communicate freely, even during network blackouts or in remote areas where coverage doesn't exist. That was Samuel's dream. But dreams, especially revolutionary ones, come with a cost. Not long after Samuel demonstrated his phone at a local tech fair, he was contacted by regulatory authorities. Telecom officials claimed his project was unauthorized, citing spectrum interference and security concerns. Within days, his prototype was seized. The ban was swift and decisive. But was it truly about safety or about protecting billion-dollar telecom monopolies? News of the ban spread fast. Social media erupted. Tech enthusiasts, journalists, and activists rallied around the story. Headlines read, Ghanaian teen silenced, innovation under attack, and who's afraid of free communication? Meanwhile, underground copies of a schematic circulated online, sparking interest from developers in India, Brazil, and Southeast Asia. The idea could not be uninvented. Samuel's invention may have been banned, but his voice wasn't silenced. His story ignited a movement. Grassroots innovation labs started popping up. Young minds in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa began to tinker with mesh networks and offline communication tools. A revolution was born, not just a technology, but a self-reliance of challenging the status quo. And it all started with one teen, a soldering iron and a dream. They tried to shut him down, but in doing so, they amplified his signal. Samuel's story isn't just about a phone. It's about power access and the unstoppable force of youth-led innovation. So the next time someone tells you change is impossible, remember Samuel. Remember the boy who built a sim-free future, one call at a time. After the ban, many assumed Samuel would fade into the background, just another genius buried by bureaucracy. But that's not who he is. Instead of giving up, Samuel began sharing his ideas anonymously through encrypted forums and tech communities. He published open-source blueprints under a pseudonym, helping others recreate his work and improve upon it. What was once a single prototype became a decentralized movement, one that couldn't be shut down. Tech activists dubbed it the People's Phone. Others called it the Offline Revolution. But for Samuel, it was about one thing, making communication accessible to everyone, no matter their income or location. While governments tried to silence his work, Samuel's vision caught the attention of international voices. A Silicon Valley entrepreneur offered him a full scholarship to study abroad. African tech hubs reached out, offering labs, resources, and platforms to continue his research freely. Samuel respectfully declined the offers to leave. He believed innovation must grow where it's most needed, right there in Africa. Instead, he partnered with local engineers and educators to start a program called Connect Africa, teaching young people how to build mesh networks, alternative communication tools, and open-source hardware all from discarded electronics and recycled parts. Meanwhile, telecom giants began to feel the pressure. Grassroots connectivity was spreading, quietly, but fast. From the outskirts of Nairobi to villages in northern Ghana, communities were finding ways to communicate without relying on expensive services. In response, some companies launched PR campaigns branding the tech as dangerous or unreliable. Others pushed for tighter regulations on wireless experimentation. But the people had already tasted freedom. The more they resisted, the louder the movement grew. What began as a no-SIM phone soon evolved into a much bigger vision. 
Samuel and his team started developing energy-efficient devices that could communicate during natural disasters in war zones, or where Internet access is routinely censored. They imagine an Africa and a world where information couldn't be blocked, voices couldn't be silenced, and innovation wasn't limited by privilege. This wasn't just about phones anymore. It was about freedom. As news of Samuel's innovation spread, global institutions began to take notice. Invitations poured in from the UN, the African Union, and even Silicon Valley's most prestigious innovation summits. But it wasn't just admiration anymore. It was recognition that a shift was happening. Samuel was soon invited to speak at the World Technology Forum in Nairobi, a place where world leaders, innovators, and policymakers converged. For the first time, a teenager from a local workshop would take the same stage as billion-dollar tech CEOs. The audience was silent as Samuel walked to the podium, holding not a fancy prototype, but the original device his hand-built, wire-taped, solid scar phone. He didn't start with specs or tech jargon. He started with a story. I didn't build this phone because I wanted to disrupt anything. I built it because my friends couldn't call their families during blackouts, because students in remote areas were disconnected from education, because we should not have to pay just to talk to each other. They told me this was illegal, but who gets to decide that? Those who profit from control or those who suffer from silence? Samuel's speech didn't just go viral. It triggered a wave of policy debates across Africa and beyond. Countries began reconsidering outdated regulations on spectrum use and grassroots innovation. A coalition of independent developers, educators, and ethical investors launched the Open Signal Project, an initiative inspired by Samuel's work to bring free, decentralized communication tools to underserved communities worldwide. Meanwhile, underground hardware labs across Africa, once hidden from sight, began sharing their work publicly. Innovation went from isolated sparks to a continent-wide blaze. Telecom giants now face a choice, evolve or risk extinction. Some tried to buy their way in, offering to fund Samuel's projects in exchange for licensing deals and ownership rights. But Samuel refused every offer that came with control strings attached. Instead, he offered them partnership on his terms, open access, low cost, and complete transparency. A few progressive firms agreed. Most walked away. But the tide was turning. People were no longer asking for permission. They were building their own futures. By 2028, just three years after the ban, over 8 million people across 13 countries were using community-built communication, devices based on Samuel's design. Remote schools were reconnected. Rural clinics were linked to city hospitals. Families separated by distance were able to speak without paying a single cent. And Samuel? He remained in Ghana, still working in the same workshop, still building, still mentoring. But now he wasn't alone. He was a nucleus of a new generation, one that believed in free innovation, open access, and African-built solutions for global problems. In the end, Samuel's story was never just about a phone. It was about possibility about what happens when raw brilliance meets unwavering purpose and refuses to back down. What began as a single prototype in a dusty workshop became the catalyst for a new digital era, one built not in glass towers, but in communities, classrooms, and homes across Africa and beyond. Samuel's name now echoes through the halls of innovation, not as a billionaire, not as a CEO, but as a symbol, a reminder that world-changing ideas don't need permission, only courage, Years later, in a village once ignored by telecom maps, a young girl places a call to her grandmother in a distant town. No SIM card. No data plan. Just a small device built by her schoolmates using free instructions from something called the Samuel Protocol. As the call connects, a single blue LED lights up. It's faint but unmistakable. The signal lives on. You can silence a device. You can ban a prototype. But you can't stop an idea whose time has come. If this story moves you, don't just watch it, share it. Subscribe for more untold stories of innovation, resistance, and brilliance from the corners of the world that matter most.